this session. Uh, we're from the City University of Hong Kong, and we're going to present the results of our paper titled uh, A Qualitative Investigation of Community Engagement Efforts with the Hidden Elderly in Hong Kong. So, first a brief introduction of who we are. So we are part of the City Youth Empowerment Project. And uh, we, are, we were established in 2005, and we are a non credit bearing voluntary service learning uh, project. And we accept volunteers, or student volunteers, from the whole university, from all the departments, and whether they're local or non-local students, as well as staff and alumni. And we mobilize the city students to engage with the community with the aim to empower both the students and the community that they uh, join. And to achieve this aim, we collaborate with over 30 organizations uh, in Hong Kong and outside of Hong Kong. So uh, the agenda for our presentation today. So first we'll discuss the background, so the elderly, elderly situation in Hong Kong, and then the paper brief, and as well as the case study that we had. Then we'll move on to the methodology, results, and the discussion. So first, a background information, information on the elderly situation in Hong Kong. So by 2029, it is expected that 26% of the Hong Kong population will actually be composed of the elderly. As you can see from this graph, that the over time, the, so the age group of Hong Kong has uh, steadily been, been moving upwards towards uh, older age. And within this group, over 10% of the elderly are actually showing signs of depression. And there are around 125,000 two-person households, uh, which means that one in the household, one person is the primary caretaker, and the second person is an elderly, aged over 65. And with this growing situation, it also leads to a increasing rate of the double, uh, what we call double tragedies, where when the caretaker falls, uh, it gets injured or it dies, then the elderly will suffer a similar fate. And over 130,000 uh, hidden elderly exist within this group. And these hidden elderly are particularly vulnerable, and this is the group that we target. <coughs> and so the question is, uh, what is the Hong Kong society doing to address this problem? So traditionally, along with the Chinese uh, concept of filial piety, uh, the younger generation should take care of the older generation. However, due to the changing social, political, economic situation of Hong Kong, this has become a less common occurrence. And with this, the government has noticed that a growing divide has uh, developed between the younger and older generations. And to address this problem, the government has taken their own in initiatives to address this. Uh, one of their main programs is like the District Elderly Community Centers. Uh, however, these centers provide a generational-centric solution to an intergenerational problem. And so they have shown mixed results. As such, uh, community-based service learning programs have proven a popular alternative, particularly by universities. And these projects have a focus on fostering the social capabilities of the elderly. And we in CityU also have a similar program, similar elderly program addressing this uh, problem. However, we have found that the research on the benefits of these projects have uh, been rare, particularly in Hong Kong, and if ever, they are unsubstantial. And so we have taken the initiative to write our own paper to analyze our own project and identify how the programmatic features have uh, facilitated benefits in the involved college students, the elderly, as well as the agency workers, and to identify what benefits they were uh, they received. Uh, for due to the time constraints, we will not discuss the benefits of the elderly, uh, the social workers. Okay, so as Jack has just uh, explained to you, we for this Of assorted food and uh, yeah, assorted meat. 
and after each service session, our um, student volunteers will be um, participating in three briefings, which will be uh, discussing uh, relevant social topics with the volunteers. And um, we use blog books to provide the necessary information for our discussion. And um, our student volunteers can also keep a track of um, what is going on in their, um, in their, in their service um, by writing on their thoughts and feelings. So our program aims to identify the potential needs of the elderly, um, develop their social confidence, help them explore the community, and ultimately, we hope to bring them back into the community. So for our students, we provided a chance for them to provide community care to the, society, uh, to the, the elderly, as well as a chance to review their own relationship with their family and community. And so for the methodology, our data was collected through a series of interviews, uh, where each interview was uh, approved by uh, by the ethics board of Sydney University of Hong Kong. And we conducted semi-structured interviews with the elderly as well as the agency so social workers while a focus group was conducted for the for our student volunteers. And the participants were recruited through a convenient sampling method. And a total of 19 participants were involved in this study. And after transcribing and translating the interview scripts, a thematic analysis was used to analyze the data. So this is just the social demographic distribution of the interviewees. So moving on to the result parts, uh, today we're going to focus on the student volunteers and the elderly's benefit. Um, for there are three main things that fall under the student volunteers' benefits and two main things that fall under the elderly benefits. As Jack mentioned before, due to the time limitation today, we're just going to cover the results and the most relevant and that's the most prevalent among the interviewees. So for the first benefits for the student volunteers is that the student volunteers being an Increase their understanding about the elderly. So through the outing activities and the home visits, the student volunteers can gain the first-hand experience with the elderly. From the narratives, we can see that they start to break some of their previous misconceptions about the general elderly populations, as they can identify their uniqueness and their individualities. Besides that, uh, they also have a more accurate conceptions about their uh, solitary elderly. Um, so the solitary elderly is no longer just a term that as a labeling for a group in the society, but they can actually picture their living conditions and their life. So for the second benefit is that the student volunteers can have a change their value systems. So through establishing rapports with the elderly, they can gain access to the elderly's past experiences. As the saying goes, the elderly are treasures. There are a lot of life wisdoms and attitudes that for the volunteers to learn from. Uh, besides that, they can also they will actively reflect on their usual practices when they interact and communicate with their families and loved ones, and they are now more aware that they should spend more time and care more about their families. Uh, for the third benefits for the student volunteers is that they can understand the socio-political environment of elderly in their society. So from the logbook and handbook, there are a lot of factual information provided for the volunteers and it can act as the foundation for the later experience to build upon one. So uh, from the narratives, you can see that uh, when the elderly cannot even feed their stomach, then will they dare to think about the social needs of going out to have fun? From this narrative, you can see that the volunteers actually go beyond the textbook knowledge and consider about the situational factor when they think about why the student, why the elderly are not going out. So moving on to the elderly's benefits, apart from the volunteers' narratives, we also include those from the elderly and social workers to try and relate the data. So for the first benefit is that the elderly have have improved their social connections. The program activities can act as a platform for the elderly to reach out and encourage them to meet other elderly in the neighborhood. So maybe some, there are some elderly living in the same buildings, but they didn't know it before they joined the programs. And what's even better is that when the, for the 
less confined to their homes. So for the second benefit for the elderly is the change in mentality. The elderly love to chat with our volunteers. They believe that it can help them to adjust for more positive attitudes and not just because they can give events for their negative emotions, but it's also because of the qualities of the student volunteers. From the care and the patience they show us during the home visits and our teams, they begin to recognize their own value in the society. So, the student volunteers and the social worker also point out that after joining the program activities, the elderly become more active in the community and they can begin to regain their own values. So we can move on to the discussion part. So um, in order to find a solution for uh, the intergenerational problems in Hong Kong, we actually and, uh, we interviewed relevant stakeholders in our service to um, to try to find a, uh, the relevant and future factors. So as you can see from, uh, from uh, just now the these um, results from, uh, we have actually achieved all of our main objectives of our program. And also during the research, we uh, noticed some extra benefits. So as you can see in the table, um, the E here stands for the elderly's benefits, and the Bs are for the student volunteers. So our elderly are mainly involved in activities like home visits, outings, and young travel, which is the uh, casual use of gathering. Um, so through all of these uh, activities, we were able to bring these hidden elderly out of their apartment and uh, brought them back into the community. Um, what's special here that I want to share with you is that our student volunteers will complete a, a assessment form after each home visit. So by using the standardized form, they were able to um, record the elderly's needs and their living conditions back to our collaborating agency for further actions. So our student volunteer will be uh, going on uh, going, uh, for home visits and outings with the elderly. So um, before and after each service session, they will have briefings and debriefings. Uh, Logbook is used to uh, provide information and for their to, for them to do reflections. So um, this program actually provides a chance for our students to uh, to provide community care to the elderly um, by writing logbooks and doing the briefings. They were able to review their own relationship with their family and their community um, through our our um, specially designed debriefings. Well, our uh, these debriefings actually pushed for some changes in our students' conception about the elderly and their attitudes towards their own lives. So, um, and uh, given the experiences with the elderly, our students actually um, came to recognize the uniqueness of the elderly and they gained a deeper understanding of the social, political environment that the elderly are living. So for a quick wrap up for the discussion part, um, we believe that our program is an effective solution for an aging society like Hong Kong, in which both the elderly and our civil volunteers are benefited. But we also recognize some of the uh, some limitations in our program and our research. Um, our program really focused on um, taking care of the elderly's needs rather than for forming a relationship among all the elderly. And um, during our service, uh, our students' commitment level also uh, has some influences on the relationship they are building with the elderly. So for our research, you can you can realize you can notice that we have a relatively small sample size, and we rely solely on interviews for um, rather than like looking at our students' logbooks and stuff like that. Um, the elderly and the student volunteers interviewed in our study is uh, are not paired in um, our service. Or the benefits um, discovered here cannot be claimed to be bidirectional. But we also believe that this program can be applied to similar societies. Uh, we would recommend long-term uh, regular visits designed with outing programs. And also for the more isolated elderly people, we recommend that you know, we, as a first step, we bring the outside world to them rather than trying to get them out. Um, we also uh, suggest a deeper involvement with the agency. So um, for our research, we believe that more specific 